hope you enjoyed the kind of watch alongs of the various great moments from last summer. But of course, this is something new for everyone, not least for you. Um, with the captaincy as well for the first time, what have you got planned for this next chapter in English cricket? Um, well, I think first and foremost, I think the, it's great that cricket is back. Uh, it's great that cricket is back on TV. Um, and, you know, I know everybody's been craving it. Um, you know, we've been in lockdown now for two weeks and um, I've been very impressed with the way that the lads have just cracked on um, with the amount of change um, that we've had to deal with. Um, and <clears throat> I think tomorrow couldn't come at a better time. You know, everybody's um, ready and raring to go. Um, there's only so much training you can really do before, before you start uh, not getting bored, but start um, getting a bit frustrated that um, you're not out on the park. Um, but today's been a really good day. I think everybody's got back into their routines that they normally would do the day before a test match. Um, and everybody's just really, really excited about what tomorrow's going to bring. Home advantage can be particularly key. I think probably we saw that as much as any last summer, didn't we? How are you aiming to replicate your performance, given the fact there won't be the Barmy Army and others cheering you on? I look at the end of the day, I think, you know, you've got to look at it as, as we're walking out on the field to, to represent our country. And, um, you know, when you've got the three lions on your chest, um, you know, the, there's nothing more sort of, you know, you can't feel any more prouder in, um, you know, given the sport that we play. Um, you know, I know there's not going to be anybody in the crowd to um, to hear or get that energy from, but, you know, we know we've got hundreds of thousands of people watching us from around England who uh, who want to see us do well so um, you know I don't have any issue with anybody using that as an excuse to not get up for this game um, you know it's been 14-15 weeks that I was playing so um, you know I think the fact that we're out on the field playing for, for our country um, you know you don't get that feeling just because there's nobody in the stands um, so yeah there you go just one final one, a cheeky one perhaps. Um, you're coming up against uh, a fellow captain, fellow all-rounder. You're ranked as the best two by the ICC all-rounders in the game. Um, is there anything from Jason Holder's game that you'd perhaps like to steal and add to your own? No. <laughs> I don't think he would say the other way either. Um, I think the fact that we're both all-rounders, we, we understand um, the crucial role that we play. Uh, we've got a chance to influence... Um, the game with the ball and the bat and you know that gives us two opportunities um, which is the best thing about being the all-rounder is that you know if one thing doesn't go quite well then you've always got a chance to, to affect the game with the other skill um, you know I always love playing against the West Indies it's always a very very competitive series that we play in um, but no I don't, I don't really look at it like that um, I just look at it to, to go out and, and try and perform against whoever's in front of me Thank you, Ben. OK, we'll go with Dan Rivers from ITN and then Ali Martin from The Guardian, please. Hi, Ben. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, all good, mate. Hey. Um, how important is this uh, match to lift the spirits of the nation after such a long lockdown? Yeah, I think it's massive. Um, you know, not only is, is cricket back from an international point of view, but, you know, obviously it's back from a... Uh, from a club cricket side as well, um, you know I know everybody's been been craving this from a player's point of view, but I also think from a spectator's view and, and a fan's point of view, this is um, this is a massive occasion tomorrow for for a lot of people around England, um, and you know we know we've got that responsibility on our shoulders um, to go out and do justice for all those people, and you know it sort of creeps back into that question about the crowd before where. You know, we can't use that as an excuse to, to not feel up for this game um, because we know we've got hundreds of thousands of people following us and, and wanting us to do well um, back home watching us on TV. Just to follow up, if I can, how much of a blueprint do you think this could be for other sports, you know, like tennis, to, the, the very tight controls and so on around, um, around the teams to, to, to prove that sport can operate in a time of COVID? Yeah, massive. I mean, look, there's obviously a lot of rules and regulations that have been put in place for this to happen. Um, and we've, 
respected all of them. Um, it is very, very different. But, um, you know, over the last two weeks, we've been um, handling that very well as a team and, 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 and as individuals. Um, not only have we done a, a great job, but I also feel that the people who have um, gone out a limb, you know, in terms of the hotel staff to, to make sure everything's catered for us, um, they've also been fantastic. And, um, you know, I feel as if there's been a lot of respect shown um, from both sides to, to making sure that this works. Because, um, you know, if you get one thing wrong, um, it might, you know, blow this whole getting sport back onto the, to the radar of people that might put that further back. Um, so we're just really great that we've been given this opportunity to be able to get back out on the field and, and we'll still be doing everything that we can to make sure that we don't mess it up. OK, good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Ali Martin, and then we'll go John Norman from TalkSport. Hi, Ben. I was just wondering if you were able to give us a team at the moment. Um, and if not, what are the sort of final decisions that yourself and Chris Silver are weighing up? Uh, yeah, we'll announce a, a team later on. Um, you know, it's been, you know, obviously we had that three-day game, which was absolutely fantastic to, to see where everybody's at and the, the competitive side of that. Um, was brilliant. That's what I asked for before the game started. I said I wanted this game to be as competitive as possible. Um, and it's not very often that we've been in a situation where we've got six or seven bowlers that we could choose from. Um, it's a real head scratcher, um, you know, as somebody who's got to choose the side. Um, but from the bigger picture, it's a great place to be in as a team. Um, you know, I feel as if we're in a position now with the test team like we were with the one day team in 2015 when we're building for that World Cup. Um, I feel as if we're building towards the Ashes in Australia and, you know, also India. Um, so to have the crop of fast bowlers that we now possess especially is a great place to be in um, as a test side. Is this what you meant by you, you might not be looking forward to being unpopular, having to actually, you know, be the one that chooses the team? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been dreading it the last three days about having to deliver bad news to some lads. Um, it's obviously not a nice thing to be able to do. Um, but that comes with, you know, that comes with being the captain. That comes with being in a leadership role. Um, it's got to be done. Um, but with the schedule that we have, um, with six six test matches in seven weeks, um, there's going to have to be a lot considered going forward. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what um, the future brings in terms of the test matches after this. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll announce the side later. Um, but it's been a very tough decision. Thank you. Uh, ben, last, uh, ben, last time out against West Indies, of course, West Indies won the series. Uh, Jason Holder, speaking to TalkSport a couple of weeks ago, said that he felt that that England side was a side in, um, in a state of flux, essentially. Uh, there was a few players trying to stake their claim within the side. Fast forward a year and a bit, how do you compare this England side that's coming up against the West Indies with the one that did lose last time out? Um, and what changes or uh, how are you going to affect a, a different result um, in this three-match series? I mean, I think if you look at how we are placed now as a team, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more probably clarity um, with everybody where there's, we have an identity as a test team, um, you know, whereas time's gone past, there's sort of been, um, you know, a few lads might have felt under pressure with guys sort of knocking the door down in a negative way. Whereas now we try and look at that from a positive point of view, that there's competitions for place for places in the team. Um, and if, if you're not performing well as a player, you know, there's someone who's, who's right behind you to come in, which is, which is a great place to be at, especially as an international side. Um, but as I said, you know, I feel we have a, have an identity now as a test team and, for us going forward, it's about building on that identity and, um, you know, we have a goal of becoming the best team in the world. Um, so we're building towards that. You've spoken about taking advice from some of the more experienced players on the field. Will you also seek some advice from Joe Root? Have you, have you been in contact? Could you imagine flicking him a text, you know, the night before the game or uh, after, you know, a, a tough day or something just to see what he's thinking about, uh, about the match, or is, is it Ben Stokes' captain and, and Joe Root's just dealing with more important matters with the birth of his second child? Yeah, no, look, I've, I said um, when I first got asked, I'm going to be very open to, um, to opinions from people, and just because Joe's not here, um, 
but that doesn't mean I'm not going to use them. You know, Joe's always been very open and willing to um, to advice from um, from players. Um, so um, I think I'll be stupid to to go away from that. Um, we've got so much experience in this team that, um, as I said, it would be silly not to lean on that if I feel like I need some advice. Um, it's been, but with Joe, obviously, with his personal situation, it's it's been sort of letting him deal with that. Um, so I haven't been on him too much. Um, but I'm sure once the test match starts, I know for a fact that he'll be at home watching. Um, and, you know, I know that the phone, uh, his phone will always be um, available for me to, to get in contact with him if I need to. Brilliant. Thank you. OK, Julian Geyer, and then we'll go with Will McPherson. Hello, Ben. I guess you must have had quite a lot of advice about captaincy since you were named as captain for this match. I just wondered, what's the best advice you've had and who gave it to you? I don't have much advice. There's been a lot of opinions flying around. <laughs> um, but uh, do you know what the best message that I've received was when I got my photos done um, yesterday in the blazer? Uh, Ruti just left a message on the, um, on the hangar, said do it your way. Fair enough. Ben, both teams have confirmed that they're going to be... George the Bell. Ben, both teams have confirmed they're going to be wearing the Black Lives Matters logo on their collars. Is there anything else we can expect in, in that space? Yeah, there's going to be a gesture shown um, from us as a team, um, you know, in support of Black Lives Matter, um, you know, towards the... Um, the equality um, in society throughout cricket and throughout sport. Um, you, you know, we aren't um, we aren't in any way, shape, or form showing support towards any political matters on the movement. Um, we're all about the, um, as I said before, the equality without uh, through society and sport. Um, you know, not only has this been a, a period for us for um, getting ready for a test match, it's also been great for us to to have some educational chats as a team um, around this, which has been um, really beneficial for a lot of our members. Uh, Mark Saxby, our masseuse, has been the forefront of that, who's done an absolutely brilliant job. Um, and I feel as a team that we've got an opportunity here to, to send a real powerful message. And we're really, I'm really excited as an individual, and the team is really excited um, that we're able to, to be a part of that. Um, because I see it, as without the diversity that we've shown as a team over however many years and the, the equality that um, needs to be given, we might not be World Cup champions. We not, might not be one of the best test teams in the world. Um, so as I said, we've got a great chance to, to send a real powerful message um, and um, you know, to educate people more on the matter. Thanks, Will. We'll go with George and then we're going to do Arani from uh, India. Hi, Ben. Um, you know better than most how much Mark Wood can offer when he's fully fit. Uh, is he fully fit? And if he is, can he be left out? Um, yeah, the transformation of Mark Wood, um, not more from a, a mental side, I think has been phenomenal. Um, you know, obviously he's had his troubles in the past with injuries. Um, and from a from a close friend's point of view, I'm I'm so excited at where he is at at the moment um, with everything. You know, all the the worries and troubles that that he would have had two three years ago as battle body seem to have just disappeared. Um, the skills that he possesses, um, you know, is very very rare to have in a bowler. Um, and you know, the fact that we've got as I said at the start, six or seven people to choose from it is going to be a very, very hard decision. Um, there has been a lot of um, thought put into the team that we are going to select. Um, but as I said, you'll have to wait till later to know what we've gone with. Thank you. OK, we'll take two more. Arani and then Kushik. Ben, uh, do you think Test Cricket is the best format to get cricket started? Uh, will this help uh, get Test Cricket the attention that it's been craving for so hopefully help its revival because people have been talking about more about the T20 World Cup and everything despite the World Test Championship Test Cricket has been struggling so do you think to get things started with Test Cricket would actually help its revival? Um, 
I don't really like when people, you know, say test cricket survival because I don't think it's it's going anywhere. Um, I think it's just a real. I think it's just a talking point, to be honest. Um, if test cricket was to ever be talked about as not being a format again, then um, it would be an absolute disaster. Um, you know, it, it is the purest form of cricket. You know, you ask the majority of cricketers um, who haven't represented um, at international level to um, to be given an opportunity to to even have one test match for your country is is, is one of the greatest honours. Um, but, you know, obviously test cricket um, sometimes can take that second seat behind, you know, white ball cricket because of the entertainment value that it brings. But you've only got to look at test matches when they get down to um, crunch moments. You know, I used Cape Town, um, our last tour there, as a great example of that, of the game sort of, you know, looking like it was going to peter out, looking like it was going to be a draw. And then all of a sudden you get to the back end of the day and then England win the game. You know, it's just full of so many ups and downs that you can't really predict what's going to happen, um, which is the greatest thing about about Test cricket. It's the purest form. It's the best form. Um, and if it ever was to, um, to leave the game, then it would be a disaster. Thank you. Last question, Kushik, please. Uh, hi Ben, my question is, uh, how are the bowlers coping with the new saliva rules and do you have any other alternative plans to make the ball swing? Um, to be honest, the non-saliva on the ball has actually not really been an issue. We've, we've seemed to have, you know, I mean, it is, it obviously it's a very natural thing to do in cricket, which is to shine the ball, put saliva on it. The, the hardest thing that we found in the warm-up game was giving our hats and jumpers to the umpire. Um, you know, that was just... It's just so natural to do, and then uh, the umpire said, "No, we can't take it off here." But we've been um, we found that sweat has helped us look after the ball. It's not as easy to do as you know it was a year ago, um, where you could use saliva. Um, but I think that you know looking after the ball now is is almost going to be another skill to add. You know whether you're a batter or a bowler, because you want the ball to be able to move in the air, whether that be conventional or reverse swing. Um, so there's been a lot of thought and different methods from us to, to try and find the way to best look after the ball. But, um, you know, we found that putting sweat on it um, is a very, very good substitute for saliva. Thank you so much. Thanks. OK, thank you, everyone. Could Rory Dullard stay on the line? Everybody else can leave the conference. Thank you. And that is now ready to go live. And we'll confirm the team later on this afternoon into early evening. Thank you.